Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to have a look at creating a realistic ink and painted photo effect in Photoshop. Before we get started with this tutorial let's have a look and see what it is that we're aiming for. This is the original image. It is an overexposed image of a truck but it's one that I've always really quite liked. So I was trying to do something completely different the other night with an image and I came across this technique and I thought mm, I think I really like that and I think it might be worth pursuing. So this is the painterly image that I've created from the original photograph and we're going to see how we can do that now. The important part about this tutorial is probably less the final result than some of the things that we're doing to get there because these will help you understand what is possible in Photoshop. So I am just going to discard all these layers that were on the duplicate image and we'll go back to the image as it would be if we opened it up out of the camera. The first thing I'm going to do is make a duplicate of the background layer. So I have two versions of the image on top of each other and I'm going to invert this with Control or Command I. And then I'm going to blend it back in and the blend mode I'm looking for is Linear Dodge because what it does is it turns everything to pretty near white. It should actually be white and that's exactly what I want. So now I'm going to apply a blur to this topmost layer and the effect of the blur is going to be to start pulling some lines out of the image. I've done that technique before in other videos. You may already be familiar with it. And this is what we're going to use here. But because I think we might pull the wrong number of lines out, I'm going to make this a smart object so that if we go too far or don't go far enough we can come back and edit it. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur because Gaussian blur blurs everything and including the edges of the image and that is exactly what is giving us these lines. So the Gaussian blur is working to our advantage here and we just want to dial it up until we start seeing something that will eventually be lines in our painting. Now we don't know at this stage how much is going to be too much so we'll just go with something and say okay well that sounds fine for now. Now that we've done that let's go to this and let's see what we can get out of this portion of the image using curves and I'm going to do it as an adjustment layer. Layer, new adjustment layer, curves and okay. And the curve adjustment I'm about to apply is one that you would never apply to a photograph but it works really well here. Just going to grab on this curve line here and just drag it down so it makes this sort of straight line curve. And immediately when I close that I'm going to say to myself okay you've gone way too far on this Gaussian blur. There's no question but that you've got too much Gaussian blur. But that's fine because it was a smart object so I'm just going to double click on it and now we can back it off. Again just looking for the lines and not too much else. Looking a bit better there. Now we'll go back up to the top of the image and we're going to apply a threshold adjustment. Another adjustment layer, layer, new adjustment layer, threshold. Now the threshold adjustment layer turns every one of the pixels on the layer that we're working on into either black or white. A pixel can only be black or white, it cannot be anything else. So what we're looking for here is a point at which we're getting the lines that we wanted. So we want some of these strong lines through the image. And when we get some strong lines we'll just take those, say thank you for that. Again if we wanted to we could come back to the Gaussian blur and adjust that because it's all connected through these adjustment layers. So if we maybe wanted some stronger lines we could achieve that at this point. Because this is the last time that we're going to get to fiddle with this set of lines because now we're going to flatten the image. We're going to do that by pressing Control, Alt, Shift and E. On the Mac that's Command, Option, Shift, E. And that flattens the image to just a layer. So we've got a single layer here. 
this is the only layer we're saying it's a black and white layer and it's filled with this sort of half line effect. We're going to apply a filter to it. We may want to adjust the filter. So again, I'm going to create this as a smart object and then apply the filter to it. The filter we're going to use is called the cutout filter. So let's just fit the image in the screen here. And you can see that the cutout filter is going to give us sort of some good lines from what was the little bit flaky lines. There's a lot of action happening here and we really only want some of those lines. Now number of levels is not going to do anything because we already have a black and white image so ignore that. What you're looking for is edge simplicity and edge fidelity and you just want to go for a combination of these that's going to give you the details that you want. And some of that's going to depend on what you wanted of your final image. Now I do not want a lot of this grass and that would be really concerning to me. That's also telling me that this has been converted from a photo. If I can get rid of that, life is going to be a whole lot better. And you can see that taking this edge simplicity value up quite high is starting to lose some of that grass and then I can just dial up the edge fidelity to get a little bit of detail in if I want it or down if I don't. I'm actually thinking that this is probably a good set of values here. Edge simplicity 6, edge fidelity 2, but your mileage may vary according to your image. Click OK. Now somewhere along the line my black and white image just got a bit of grey in it. So the next thing I'm going to do is just do another curves adjustment to get rid of the grey. So layer new adjustment layer curves. Curves allows me to lighten the lights and darken the darks in the image or I could go the other way but in this case I want the whites to be white and the grey black areas to be darker and I can take them pretty near as dark as I want them to be. So again, I'm just looking for an interesting little conversion here. I think that'll do. Now I'm going to flatten this layer because we've pretty much got it looking the way we want it to look. Probably the only other thing I might try is a levels adjustment just to see if I can get a bit more white into that layer. I can do that by pulling the whites across in levels. Didn't get quite so much of that flexibility in the curves adjustment there. So this is looking a little bit better to me. So having done that, I'm going to create a flattened version of the image, another Control alt shift e Command Option Shift E on the Mac, because that gives me now this black and white layer with the lines that I want on it on a separate layer. So now let's go back and get our truck. And I'm going to duplicate that layer and I'm going to take a copy of it all the way up to immediately underneath my lines. Going to my lines layer and I'm going to look for a blend mode which is going to give me some of the colour of the truck behind it. And right now all I'm really looking for is black lines and truck. And I'm thinking linear burn is going to give it to me. Now it's gone from looking like a sketch to looking like black lines over a photograph but that's fine because the next thing we're going to do is start working on this background copy. And one of the things that I want to do is hoof up the colour in this. So I'm going straight onto this layer with image adjustments and I'm going to do a vibrance adjustment because that will kick the colour all the way up. And let's give it a saturation boost as well because we want these rich colours in our painted effect. So let's click OK. And we could even do a curves adjustment again straight onto this layer because destroying it is not an issue for me. Down a bit to really get some rich colour here. Maybe up a little bit to get some contrasty colour. 
and let's click OK there. Now we've got the colour that we want but we really want to get something a little bit more interesting happening on this image and we can do it a couple of ways and I'm going to show you both, in fact I'm going to combine both for these purposes. The first thing I'm going to do with this layer here is I'm going to surface blur it. Filter, blur, surface blur. The reason why I use surface blur is it is a unique blur in that it blurs the middle or the flatter areas of the image and maintains the edges. So you, it's not like the Gaussian blur that would blur these all into each other. We're still seeing some of the edges here. So what I want to do is get its radius and its setting so that we're getting some blur but we've still got a bit of detail in the image. So I really, really like these colours. OK, and let's click OK. Now you may choose to leave the image at that point. I think that I can go a bit further and I'm going to do just that. So with this layer selected, I'm going to target the Art History Brush tool here. And I'm going to choose Window History because I want to plug this layer as the one we're going to paint on. So with the Art History Brush tool selected, and I'm going to select a brush. So I'm going to do Tight Long because I want a big brush to start off with. I'm going to make it quite big. And I'm going to start just painting directly onto this layer. And I just want to cover up the photo. So I want to get rid of the photo look about this. So that's now going to look as if I've been just throwing paint over the top of some black line art. The paint though is being sampled from the image underneath. So that's why we're still getting the appearance of the truck happening. And all I need to do now is to start reducing my brush size and perhaps go to a tight medium brush. And then I'm going to start painting over the image in the areas that I want to get the colour a little bit more detailed. So a little bit smaller brush strokes so that each of them is going to be coloured differently. And again, a slightly smaller brush and I'll keep working on that until I get the effect that I want. I could go to a dab brush and that will give me a more dab effect here. Just going to say, got some art history brush tools here. You can get to those by opening up the tool preset and choose art history and that will give you some brushes that you can use with, with the art history brush. So again, this is an impressionist sort of brush that you can use. It's all preset and just ready to go on the image. So you can just paint over the image with it. There are other brushes here. There is a palette knife, which is kind of cool. Again, I'm going to just enlarge it and that's going to give you more of a palette knife look on the painting underneath. I start off with that large and then I would start working on it with a smaller brush because the smaller brush is going to give me just a little bit more detail, perhaps a little bit more colour. And every time you paint over these areas the colour is going to move just a little bit. So sometimes you can get good detail and sometimes you might find that detail is lacking. So you may want to just continue to work in an area until you get the detail that you want to see. So I would keep doing that until I had an, a painterly effect that I liked. But one thing I want to show you before we leave here is what else you can do because right now we have got the black and white layer on the top and the painting layer underneath. Let's just see what happens if we reverse those two. So let's take the black and white layer and set its blend mode to normal and now we're going to take the background copy which is where we've been painting and put it on top. Right now its blend mode is normal but we're going to start walking it down to see if we get a better effect, a blended effect, this time 
using the reverse, using the blending from the top layer into the bottom layer. And the action that you're going to say is going to be in these darkening areas in darken, multiply, color, well not color burn, linear burn, yes, darker color. There's a possibility always that overlay will give you something interesting, except this time overlay has let us down really badly. This is hard light, linear light, pin light. So you just want to really have a look and say what it is that you're getting. I am liking these darkening and multiply effects. I kind of like those a lot. One thing I might do with this layer though is go and pump up its saturation a bit more still. So with it selected, I'll choose image adjustments, maybe vibrance, kick up the vibrance and saturation a little bit, make it even richer still. You could use the hue saturation to walk the colors around a little bit to get a more interesting result. So again, we could walk it around to more reds. We could walk it into the greeny purples. Or you could go and adjust just individual channels. So we could take the yellows and we could make them a bit more blue, a bit more orange. So we could get a sort of autumn look to the image by just targeting individual colors and then taking them in different directions. Because we've really got the painterly effect that we wanted, now all we're doing is just sort of fine tuning the painterly effect and saying, okay, well, what colors do we really want to be working with? So we have taken an image of a truck that looks like that. And you really do want to laugh about this because we've actually turned it into what looks like a painted image and it's been extremely easy to do just using these features in Photoshop. And really we've got a long way away from the concept that this really was a, a photograph. It doesn't look like a photograph anymore. If you're happy with this at this point, you could flatten it to a new layer and you can go and texturize it. Filter, Filter Gallery. We're going to go to the textures. Let's go and choose the texturizer layer. And I kind of like burlap for this. And we can set the relief on that and just click OK. So again, we're, this time we're applying a sort of textured canvas look to the image, a long way away from the original photo that we started off with. But I think that you'll have a lot of fun with this technique. I have not met an image yet that it has not been really, really good with. It's provided your image has some strong lines, a little bit of edge detail so that you can pull that detail out. There's a lot of potential for having a lot of fun with your photographs using this tool and you don't need to be able to paint to get some really nice results. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials on this YouTube channel and subscribe to this channel so that you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com for more tips, tricks and tutorials on Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, PaintShop Pro 5, Illustrator, Lightroom and a whole lot more.